except Russia. It's not enough to say the child of God without stepping deeper and know the great things you should know. I consider this meeting this morning very important to me because I want to see revival all over the place. We were in uh, Okigwe. How many cripples were there? 32 cripples. They were shocked when I said to them, I will not pray for any one of you. But stand up. And people were looking at me as though I had gone mental. And I said, There is power bestowed on us to make the impossible possible. Yes, sir. I was shocked when they began to stand up one after another. And people began to call their relations at home to come and see Jesus. I, hey, I am not Jesus. I am a small rat compared to Jesus. You know, we had to pay bricklayers to break down the stadium wall because of the crowd. Up till now, people in, in Okibwe will not allow me to pay for the petrol I buy in the area. Once I show up, they will start paying my bills. Can we turn to the book of Acts? Chapter 16, let's start verse 17, verse 18. Verse, okay, we'll stop at 18. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 16 from verse 17 The same followed Paul and us and cried saying These men are servants of the most high God which show unto no, no, us no. What are we? No, Mark chapter 16 okay, Let's have verse 18 Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Right where you are this afternoon. Or is it morning or afternoon? Uh, afternoon. Still morning. It's not yet afternoon. It's still morning. Right where you are this afternoon. If you have a relationship with God. The Bible says there will be a sign that will follow you. There are things that will tell the world who you are. When we had this type of program in Omaha, Ochozo was then the governor of the state. I think people were shocked to see cripples stand up and walk without prayer. When God brings you to that place, you will become very careful and very, very careful as to how you live your life. There are things you would like to keep and maintain. There are things you would like to do that the watching world may know you are not an ordinary person. Remember, I was, I was about 10 years and about that time, miracles were not seen everywhere. If, you, if God uses to perform one miracle, the story will run right. It will be talked about almost every day. Some will say you're a Juju man. Others will say you're not a human being. But when you realize what God can do with you, it will help you to respect God and respect yourself and honor God and honor your own calling. 
I saw God do the impossible. In fact, the governor of the state <laughs> was so excited. I think they, I don't know, the better one, the one of uh, Owere. The governor was driving into the stadium and I stopped him and I said, why are you insulting God? He said, what did I do? In your car, you were discussing God and, and saying to God, what will Mark calls miracles are not miracles. A miracle is to see a man born, born crippled, walk without prayer. <laughs> I, I got up and hugged the governor and told him, now you will see people born, crippled, and they work for you. But when next you come to my meeting, don't insult God, or I will cause trouble for you. I asked the crowd, who, are, who were born crippled? How many of them? Three. Three of them. And I said to them, the governor wants to see a man born crippled walk. Can you three stand up and walk for the governor? That this governor may not insult God again. He asked me, how did you hear what I was saying to God? You're asking me, you're a stupid man. Well, I know my wife would not like, she was there, she would not like my saying what I said. But there is a level of anointing, a man's anointing determines his behavior. When I was rebuking the governor, even the governor himself stood up and was asking me, how did you hear what I said? My friend, stop. You know you were insulting God when you ask that to your question. So I said, can the first cripple, born cripple, walk up to the governor and hug him? That was in a grasshopper stadium. Well, the, the young man got up, ran to the governor, held him and said, don't let this man go back to you without my brother walking the way I now walk. Two of us were born twins and we were born crippled. And he began to cry. Men and brethren, I was excited to see the governor also cry. The wife asked him, why are you crying? You are the governor of the state. And the governor replied and said to the wife, can you just shut up your mouth? When did you see such a miracle last? When did you see it for the first time? And while, while they were talking to one another, I asked the second cripple to stand up and hug the governor. The place roared. Some people were crying. But I was amused. My friends who came from U.S. for that program said to me, don't talk to us again on our way back. They are not a human being. They said, you, you have all this while you've been making us talk and talk and talk. In the presence of a man like you, we should be quiet. Hey, this is not America. This is Nigeria. You do what I ask you to do. Who is the third man born crippled? That was uh, James Uke reminding me that I had said there would be three, but that they had seen only two. Where is the third person? When I called for the third person, it turned out to be a 26 year old man who was born crippled. When he stood up, the man did not walk, he began to run the stadium was turned upside down. So I said to the governor, my brother, just find your way and run. Nobody can control this crowd. 
if they knock you down and kill you, let nobody blame me. You will be surprised to hear me say this day as we speak, God is looking for men he can use as instruments of healing and instruments of restoration. People that God can use to wipe away the tears of others. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you know the young man came to you to a fellowship? <laughs> two, two of them. <laughs> and there was no space. They came the last year, they came on this sir. year. Last year. Last year. As soon as they stepped in, we lost the crowd. People were shouting, dancing, jumping. Do I have anybody here who has a desire, compelling desire, an unquenchable desire to be used by God to wipe away the tears of families? Well, I have seen your hands, but you have to pay the price. The price of holiness. People like Jesus repeated their miracle because they stayed away from sin. You will have to be your own headmaster and say to yourself there are things I will not do again. That God may honor you, that God may use you. Two of my children were born crippled. When you are a preacher of miracles and you have a cripple in your house, you don't know how rude Nigerians can be. <laughs> a, a woman who took care of my took care of my wife in our sec, the bearing of our second child asked me, that your crippled son, is this still cripple? And I said yes. She said, you see, I have always regarded you as a crazy man. If God heals, let him come from your house. And I said to her, having turned your mouth into a basket mouth, the miracle will start today. She laughed like a Tisha cat and mocked me. And I asked God, what do I do? And God said, raise a song to my honor and your son shall walk. I was, I was on my way to a Bible school in America and I said to my wife, on my return, this boy shall walk. He will not require prayer. Beautiful, beautiful woman. You know what she said? She said, if another woman had this type of problem, you will not sleep again. You will pray until the child will walk. Because it is my child, uh, you are not interested. Well, if you are married to a woman who cannot make you show your weakness, then something is wrong with you. I wept. And God said, stop crying. On my return back from the Bible school, at the airport, she, she said, didn't you say on your return, we are now in Nigeria. There's no other place to go again. Madam, don't worry. I'm going to make a very short sentence here. Every problem has time limit. Did you hear me? You didn't hear me. You didn't sound like a... Not every problem will last forever. But once it is time for any problem to unfold itself, God will step in and give you a miracle. 
When this woman asked me this question and I replied by saying to her, in our walk with God, there is time for everything. This boy shall walk today. I went from song to song, from song to song. The boy fell under the anointing and slept off, woke up and said, Daddy, do you know while, while you were singing, angels were here adjusting my bones and now I can walk now I can run to me the greatest evidence of God's presence is to see God demonstrate his power on your behalf I drove to the hospital where my wife gave birth to her second child and I now saw her the miracle God had performed that our son now walks my wife did not smile she did not betray her emotion she just looked at me with fixed gaze and glance and said to me as a preacher you are not allowed to tell lies but if this boy walks I'll give you a goat so I picked my pen and wrote the word goat and asked her to sign under that she was owing me a goat on her return to the house the boy ran shouting mama I can walk mama I can run my wife threw away her handbag and began to cry. Madam, you didn't promise me tears. You promised me a goat. Where is the goat? She, she said, give me money. I'll buy you a goat. Madam, you are principal of the college. I drove to her village, drove through the night to her village to announce to her father that she made a promise she did not honor. Her son now walks, but she had promised me a goat, which I would decide what to do with the goat. Now we have a crippled son who now walks but there's no sacrifice to make unto God. The father said to me, does the boy now walk? And I said, yes, they go to the backyard. Any go to their choice. Pick it. Now you know why the poor man says, a poor man who marries your daughter may never give you that goat. The man gave me the goat. But in my foolishness, he asked me to take the goat of my choice. And I picked the biggest goat, not knowing the goat was pregnant. <laughs> my tradition will not allow you to slaughter a pregnant goat. But I told my wife to forget about the state of the goat. Just bring the goat. We had another beautiful child who was also crippled. When I told my wife God asked me to bring that child to the city where crusade in Uyo, that he God shall cause the girl to walk without prayer. My wife was angry. She asked me of of the two of you, who is the madman here, you or God? Why can't this God heal the child, this child behind closed door? Why bring this child to the whole world and advertise our problem to the watching world? Madam, I called her and said, you are getting it all wrong. Number one, that you are born again does not mean you have 
you'll be exempted from the problems of life. And I said to her, the miracle will not be the same. This girl will fall under the anointing and while she's sleeping, God will be mending her legs. Angels will be employed and engaged to repair her legs. And when she wakes up, she'll be able to walk without any prayer. Well, I am saying, emphasizing this because many people believe there will be no miracle without prayer. At the PFN meeting in Benin, I was shocked. My friends were angry. And they made me the last speaker. And I said to them, for making me the last speaker and punishing me, I will preach, but I will not pray for the sick. And 1,000, how many? 200 shall be healed. The sense again, the rule of the game. The right thing is you preach and pray. Hey, shut up your mouth. A man's anointing determines his behavior. Number two, we are all equal in fellowship. We are not equal in anointing. Is that correct? Yes, so I said to them, I will not pray for the sick to punish all of you for harassing me. When we counted those who were healed, how many were there? There were 5,000. 5,000. Benin broke down. They began to sing, don't go back to you, for we love you. Don't go back. I was amazed because I didn't go to Benin as a refugee. <laughs> the vice president of this good republic was there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he, he said to me, Reverend, I'm, I'm going to surprise you with a song. Come, do you remember that song? What was that song? Aka, 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 complex cases you will know that this God is our life and he's your God can somebody shout hallelujah it is my desire compelling desire unquenchable desire that everyone here we we'll begin to long and crave and hunger after God and ask God to use you to wipe away tears. It's like a day I was driving through you. A woman who visits my wife and two of them were friends said to me, Do you know you're a wicked man? You know I have no child. You never bothered to pray for me. Madam, who runs after who? The physician or the sick? And I said to her for insulting me, your punishment will be this. Every year, one child. Every year, one child. 
<laughs> and she began to dance and cry. She asked me, do you mean one day I'll be pregnant? There are men who when they speak, God will answer. I don't want us to pass through this world without showing the world what this God can do. When when, God, when people can point at you and say God can use you to perform miracles the same people will begin to respect you and honor you you yourself become very happy she one day sent food to my wife and asked my wife to ask me to ask God to close her womb and I said the clock had just the uh, Had just started moving forward. You have, at that time, I think she had only about five children. And then she cooked food and brought so many plates of food to my wife. I asked to know why, what I did to merit that type of gift. My wife said she wants you to tell God to close her womb. She has had enough. And I said, no, 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 no. I have anointing. If you close your womb, I will command the womb to return. She said, then I will pay a doctor to remove the womb. And I said, uh, no doctor will remove your womb. She said, if you don't help me, I will kill myself. Madam, we are not ordinary people. A governor's first daughter came to her fellowship and di just died. I went to her and said, my friend, people don't come here to die. They come here to receive miracles. Get up! She woke up and asked me, where did I go to? You're asking me. You must be crazy. When the governor heard about it and came, he promised me every money he had on earth. But the man died without giving me that money. When I go to heaven, I will ask him to redeem himself. Are you still here? Yes, How many of you would like God to use you to wipe away tears? I don't know whether you know that the first... Um, the first people that Jesus healed without prayer were ordinary human beings. The lepers who were healed. Do you know that they were ordinary human beings? <laughs> How many of you would like God to heal you without prayer? Anybody here? I want you to hear me this this afternoon. We have limitless, boundless possibilities in our walk with God. There are people who won't believe that these things are possible. But God is desiring to use you in a way that the watching world will respect him and celebrate him and honor him and honor you also. That's the book of Luke chapter 17 From 11 through 17 And it came to pass It came to pass As he went to Jerusalem As he went to Jerusalem That he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee Yes And as he entered into the certain village Yes They met him ten men they met him ten men that were lepers. That were lepers Which stood afar wait, wait, off wait. I don't know whether you know who a leper is a leper is a carrier of diseases. I don't know if you know that a leper, a leper is a social outcast. A leper cannot eat with a wife. 
A leper cannot sleep with the wife. A leper dies slowly without dying quickly. But Jesus, the master of the game, do you know he healed these ten lepers without praying for them? <laughs> awesome God. And I want you to hear me this afternoon. That same God can heal people through you without prayer. Yeah. I don't want you to continue to be an ordinary Christian. Let the world around you discover what God can do through you. You can be used by God to wipe away tears. We, let's let's go back to chapter chapter what? Let's go back to um, chapter sixteen, verse seventeen, and verse eighteen of the book of Luke. And these signs shall follow them that believe. The Bible says there are signs that will follow those who believe. In my name. Shall they cast out In devils? His name shall they cast out what? Devils. Demons. They shall Wait. speak with new tongues. In 1985, when I used to smuggle Bible to China, <laughs> one of my friends who lives around here, I won't call his name. We got to Hong Kong. Preparing to fly into Canton. And we slept for that night. And this, my two friends who went with me, dreamt a dream where they were all arrested. I was the only one who was not arrested. And I said to them, God has tested the three of us. I only pass the exam, so you don't travel with us. Let me go alone. If they lock me up, you can come for my rescue. <laughs> Anybody who tells you stubborn headed people are not good people is a lie. When you repent, you will be as tough as an arm robber. We got to Kenton. And they said, place all your boxes on our machines. If you have any Bible, more than one copy, you will go to jail for 20 years. Men and brethren, I began to cry. I said to God, so those my friends who did not pass this exam are really the lucky ones. Here I am facing 20 years jail term. I broke down. And God said, why are you breaking down? You have refused to use the weapons I gave you. Speak in tongue and I'll speak from heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> And I began to speak in tongue. Officers came to me and asked me, who are you? Our five machines are broken now. And the sound of your voice. Are you a native doctor? My friend, shut up your mouth. No native doctor has a good jeep. And uh, all native doctors are poor. <laughs> this God is wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. They ask, they ask me, are you a human being? Hey, you, are you a human being? They answer. <sighs> this God is wonderful. I began to speak in tongue. And the the boxes where 
de um, where the 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 boxes were mocked in were shocked to hear that all the machines are packed up. And I said to them, if you don't want trouble, real trouble, the type of that we Nigerians can produce, just open that place and let me go. I was checked into a wise one hotel. They had sent cars to pick me to their hotel. That made me look like a big man. They asked me to go. I should carry my trouble and go. My friend, this is no trouble. I'm carrying what we call good news. Are you still here? Yeah. <laughs> the, more, the more you walk with this God, the more mesmerized you will be. They allowed me to go. And up to now, nobody has come looking for me. Either that they have died or they have disappeared. But I'm still here, and I'm sure they themselves are still thinking and wondering who that man was. Can I announce that the same God can use you at that level? The Bible says we can speak in tongues, but what does it mean to speak in tongues? To speak in tongues is to call God for reinforcement from the commander in chief. No, you didn't hear me. I, I suspended the pastor in Uyo. And the pastor said to me, This evening I'll be coming to a house with them robbers. And I said, please, can people come on time so that we can finish and I'll be able to sleep well. He said, I didn't say I'll bring you uh, dancers. I said, I'll bring you arm robbers. I heard, sir. I heard. I'm also waiting for them. Let power meet with power. The lesser power shall bow to the greater power. <laughs> About midnight, my phone rang. A pastor... What's his name? Ben, ben, eh? ben of Young. A pastor of the sinners of God called me and said, I'm robbers at your gate. But your gate is going up and down. And they want you to pray for them and plead with God not to kill them. Thank you, sir. And that will be my best prayer for the year. Father, and God said, Roma, relax. I'm already in control. Right where you are, there is so much you can do that to surprise you. Have you ever seen arm robbers look for help? Huh? You have not. Wow. You have not seen miracles until you see arm robbers beg for help. They said, Dead you, man. We are here as a result of mistaken identity. We were going somewhere else. We lost our way. We didn't come here to harm you. We can't harm you. You are father. Just tell God to have mercy. <laughs> How many of you would like to be in my position where you can now tell God what to do? Uh oh, everybody is uh, up. <laughs> Wow, can somebody shout hallelujah? Ask them to kneel down. They say, no, we want to lie down. When an Amrava prefers to lie down, that shows something has happened in heaven. Father, please don't kill them. We are looking for new converts. These people will look like wonderful converts. So please spare them in Jesus' name. We serve a great mighty God. And I want him to start using you to do the impossible. Amen. 
The amazing thing was after that encounter, we didn't see the young man again who had promised to send arm robbers to me. Where they went to, we don't know. But I'm sure he has not died. But we didn't see any cops anywhere. Tell somebody by your side that God is your God. Wow. This God wants to. Okay, let's finish. Let's go back to chapter 16. Huh? 6? Chapter 16. 16. They shall take up serpents. They, they can take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. If they drink any deadly poison, it shall not hurt them. You know, I was invited by a church in Abba. We went. They took me to the bedroom and kept my wife in the parlor. And they asked me to bring every money on me and the key to my car. I told them I like your church. So you invite a guest speaker, you lock him up, collect his money and his, the key to his car. Hey, I'll give you this key and the money. When I hear God, the man that gave me this money, when I hear him say, surrender the key and the money to them, then I'll give it to you. But for now, I will not. They said, this is no problem. We shall give you a cup of drink to drink. And you will hear God tell you to give her the key to your car and the money on you. Sure. Bring the liquid, let me drink. They brought me a liquid, and I said to the liquid, Thou liquid, I drink you as tea. You must function as tea. If you go beyond the boundaries of tea, whatever God will do to you, don't call my name. And I raised the cup up and said, Thou cup, you are now tea. Have you ever heard that Jesus spoke to, to an inanimate object and that, that, that little tree obeyed? Do you know it can happen again? Yeah. <laughs> I, I listened to them, watched them till it got to close to midnight. I said to them, it's now my turn to demonstrate the power of the kingdom I represent. Uh, you have uh, given me something I have taken it I told the cop you are tea you will now function as tea if you go beyond the boundaries of tea whatever God will do to you don't blame me because I'm as crazy as you are <laughs> they ran to my wife said madam come come our guy is angry he wants to kill us Come, come. My wife likes that type of journey, or that type of uh, assignment. She, she walked over to where I was and said, you like trouble. They have opened that gate. Let us go. Madam, who is causing trouble here, me or they? I came to pray for them. They locked me up. They want money. They want key. Who is one breaking the law, me or these people? He said, are you sabi? And they began to beg me. I like when my enemies be, beg me for, for their lives to be spared. <laughs> Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? How many of you believe you can drink poison and it will not kill you? Wow. That's, that's fantastic. Are you sure? Yes, sir. You will not panic. You will not cry. You will not start prophesying. God wants to introduce you to all those who hate you. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Do I have anybody that has a hand here? You have a hand? Can you raise up your hand? Let me see. The Bible says... You can lay your hand on the sick and the sick shall recover. 
But if you are the sick, you can lay your hand on yourself. And this God will heal you. Wow. Six months ago, my doctor said my my backbone has shifted. I should submit myself for surgery. And that they will operate on me and correct it. I told them that's what to call option one. Option two, I can lay my hand without going for surgery and speak to that bone to leave me alone and mind his business. I'll mind my own. <laughs> they asked me, what do we do? Hey, just open your eyes while I say my prayer. Father, let this bone be corrected and be returned to its original place. And let this bone be healed for I ask in Jesus' name. The next morning, do you know the bone returned? When, when I, on my way to London, you know, they wanted me to show, show them how the miracle was done. I told them I would not do that kind of business. Right where you are this afternoon, there is a plan by God to use you and show you what he, God, can do for you. This is why we need to walk with God in all honesty and sincerity. We need to walk with God and ask God to help us understand the way He heals. But God also can sedate you that He may heal you. Let's go on, sir. Verse 20. Verse 20. What does it say? And they went forth. And they went forth. And preached everywhere. And preached and, everywhere. And the Lord walking with them. And the Lord walking with them. And confirming the words with signs following him. Do, do I have anybody Amen. here who would like to walk with God in performing miracles? Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's now return to chapter 5 of the book of Acts. And let's take verse 15 through 25. And by the hands of the apostles, by the hands of the apostles, were many signs and wonders wrought. signs and wonders wrought. Among the people. Among the people. And they were all with one accord. They were all with one accord. In Solomon's porch. At Solomon's porch. In so much that they brought in forth so the sick. That they brought forth the sick. Into the streets. Into the streets. And laid them on beds and, and couches. And them on beds and couches. That at the least the shadow of Peter. At the least the shadow of Peter. Passing by. Passing by. Might overshadow them. Might was, overshadow those who are sick. There came also a multitude there out of the cities. There came also a multitude out of the cities. Round about. Round about. Unto Jerusalem. Unto Jerusalem. Bringing sick folks. Bringing sick folks. And them which were vexed and with them unclean that spirits. And were vexed with sickness. And they were healed everyone. I don't know whether you heard what we read. The shadow of Peter brought healing to many. <laughs> I know what Nigerians will say. Oh, he's a Namaji Wobo. Obu on a job. Ibunka Runa. Obu on a job. There are people that God can use to do the impossible. Anybody from Ohafia here? Stand up. You know where they call Okon? Are you from Okon? 
I was asked by God to destroy every shrine in uh, in, in Ocon. <laughs> I asked my wife to go with me. She said, no, go today. If you come back alive, tomorrow we shall go together. <laughs> it's good to marry an intelligent woman. Well, it's just that no soldier goes to war with a wife. Huh? How come people are feared by the whole of Hebrew land? We lost the war because of all con people. The, the plants by 2 p.m. are harvested by 3. The fish on a dry land. You shoot them, they give you back your bullets. They went to my mother and told her not to allow me to visit them, that they were determined to kill me. My mother began to cry, Ma, why are you so naive? Why are you crying? This God has a whole world. He can make the impossible possible. Well, to make it short, we are right. And I want the people never to make attempt at killing anybody anymore in that village. When they shoot you, you will not give them back their bullet. He would die. They didn't listen to me. The next day, they went to attack Ipun people and they killed 300 of them in one night. I was happy they sent a prominent man to ask me to ask God to forgive them. I was happy because this particular man, every time I, every time I tried to drive through their village, they asked me to park my car because the, the smoke from my exhaust pipe had been troubling them. They disobeyed me and they went to fight Ukraine people and they killed 300 of them in one night. When those who gave their lives to Christ filed out to attend Deeper Life Church program in Ocon. Do you know the grave, I mean the, the, the not the cloud, the, the, the earth caved in. And others ran away. <laughs> they, begged, they begged me and asked me to play with God and ask God to spare them. The God we serve is awesomely awesome. And as many as we said to him this night, I want to know you more. I want to be an instrument in your hand. Use me to wipe away tears. Use me to make the impossible possible. Do you know he will do it for you? And for those who need the miracle you want to perform. And this God will be happy to walk with you. I'm going to call for four questions. Is there anybody that has a question to ask me? Do. Ask now. I want God to plant a, a, a desire a compelling desire, an unquenchable desire to be used by you and wipe away tears. How many of you believe that this God can do it for you and through you and with you? The hands are too many. Are you sure? Yes, <laughs> can I take four questions from four persons? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Reverend Sir, thank you, sir, for the privilege. Um, Daddy, I want to ask, um, as a child of God, I want to serve God and they manifest the power and the glory of God. Are there ways foundation and ancestral power can be a hindrance to the manifestation of what is ancestral power? The ancient powers in the what do you call ancient powers? That's a foolish grammar. There is nothing like ancestral power. I said I in Ocon ninety five percent of them are native doctors. What to call ancestral power. But when power meets with power, the lesser power shall bow to the greater power. Are you hearing me? We went to eat in the home, my wife and I, and we found rings in the soup. Because I don't know how to cook, I thought the latest way to cook now is to add rings. I thought my wife would be frightened. She was not. So we ate and left. The next morning, the owner of the house was at the door, crying. Ma, what happened? She said, it is my housemaid that put that charm in your food. Eh? Was there any charm in that food? She said, yes. Madam, because I don't know how to cook, I thought the latest way to cook now is to cook and add chains and charms. So we ate and blessed the Lord. We are happy. She brought them and began to cry. God cannot compete with any ancestral spirit. No. No. I don't know what year this was. I went to dedicate my village back to God. And the chief priest died. The whole elders of the village got up and said to me, you preached. You prayed. All we said was, Amen. Here is a corpse. And God said to me, Call his name seven times. He will wake up. One doctor, one great doctor, my friend, asked me to rush the corpse to a hospital. And I said, no. God asked me to do something else. Father, let somebody tell me this man's name. They gave me the name. As I called him the seventh time, he sneezed and sat up. The whole village began to dance. When God is up to do something, no ancestral power can stop him. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Any other question? Thank you, Daddy. Yeah. Go. The question I want to ask is at this end time, how can wealth flow into the church to move the gospel? <laughs> you want me to answer the question? The, you know, the Bible says the whole earth belongs to who? <laughs> I have been preaching for very many years. I am I had never borrowed money. I had never owed anybody. Like the, the school God asked me to build. What they call the school? 
the one in Asaga. Polytechnic. Huh? Polytechnic. That should be a, a, build, a, a building of 1.5 billion naira. And God said, don't ask anybody for money. I'll give you the money. I told this my pretty girl. She told me it's not possible. You can't build such expensive building without borrowing money from the bank, getting money from somebody, calling for offering in the church. The next morning, my phone rang. Somebody said, when you came to Lagos last, I was a member of Emmanuel uh, Sakwe's church. I met you and you prayed for me and told me that God said he will make me the seventh richest man in Nigeria. I have become one. And that God asked me to give you 13 billion naira. Telling you a stupid man. God did not say so. God asked you to give me 1 billion and keep 12 billion for yourself. My wife, I thought, was sleeping. Got up from her sleep and asked me, Are you well? <laughs> See her here. She said, She said, She said, Don't you know what, do you know what 12 billion can do? The problems 12 billion can solve. <laughs> no, my, it's not, you're, you're missing the mark. Favor with God is more than 12 billion naira. Am I correct? <laughs> and, uh, that was the end of the argument. No, the man came back when last year or this year, when he brought me ten cows. Last year. Last year, he brought me ten cows and asked me, Why are you afraid of much money? Who is afraid of much money? I rejected much money. Is that what you mean by why are you afraid of money? Somebody is shouting, hey. <laughs> last week, was it last week? When did I give you people the money? Uh, two, weeks ago. two weeks ago. God said to me, finish the university you're building in New York and uh, don't ask anybody for money. So I announced to them and said, I had, uh, how much was it? Ni eh? 90. 90 million. No, 99.9 .9 million. They were all shocked. When I lined up the money, our treasurer, <laughs> our treasurer said to me, I've never seen that type of money before. My friend, you don't have to see it to collect it. Awesome. Is that what you mean? Where my house is in Ohafia, we had a series of God General Council meeting in our, in our saga because of me. I invited my friend all the way from Togo, Pico Sini. Some of you will know him. He came and shocked me. He said to the whole crowd that he saw a prophet in a cave. Who is the prophet? Me. He said, when this man comes to Benin, Togo, we will send vehicles to pick him from Benin. We will we'll drive him in to show people how rich our prophet is. But then he came to my village and saw me in a cave. What I call a house is a matches box. I went to him in tears and I said, what, what do you think you're doing? He said, I want to wake you up from this sleep. When you come to uh, 
Togo. You demonstrate the power of God and I thought I was going to bring my people to the house of a prophet only to find that his house is a cave. I began to cry. God says, stop crying. I'll give you gold in the trash. While we were digging the sucker away, they found gold where I have that house. Are you still here? How many of you would like to build on a, a gold? How many of you would like God to give you some gifts? <laughs> I can continue and I will, I will mesmerize you. Do you know as I'm standing before you now, do you know money has no meaning to me? After God told me to complete this, the university we are building in Akwaibo, I was shocked when God said you will soon find surplus money in your account. As I speak, I have not told my wife what are you? Did you ask me anything about the money? No. I think she's used to it. The God we preach has the whole heaven and the whole earth. Are you still here? Yes, How many of you believe that this God can can open heaven and bless you with the money from heaven? Yes, if God is the owner, let's see the book of Psalm, chapter chapter forty, let's take verse one and two. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's. The earth. How many of you believe that this world belongs to our God? Can I have you raise up your hand? Wow. And the fullness thereof. Yes. The world. The world. And they that dwell therein. And they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas. He had founded it upon the seas. And established it upon the floods. And established it upon the floods. The whole world belongs to God. Including your children and your wife. Mm. 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 Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Right where you are this moment. God can give you ideas how to create wealth. <laughs> God can show you how to create wealth. How many questions have I answered? Only two. What happened? You want to ask your own? I want to ask. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Daddy. Yes. Please, um, I want to ask. Yesterday that um, your representative preached, there is something he said when they had a program at Omisha, Anglican Communion, that you came, it was raining for days and they have been praying. And you came and just sang, Tuara ya mama, and the rain stopped. They asked you afterward, I think in the hotel room, what was different? And you asked them whether they had God's direct line, whether God knows their voice in heaven. Daddy, I want to ask, I enjoy the relationship you have with God. We all want to be like you. What must we do to come to that level of relationship? We are, when we ask, when we just open our mouth, God will just hear us. Daddy, we, we, we need a lot of 
We are all your children, and we need to be like you. Well, what is madam? Didn't God say, ask the same thing they're asking now, last night? God said, people were asking her, how long does your father pray? What makes his prayer different from their own? I don't know what answer. Two of you were having special prayer. Eh? Eh? What? You were... No, no, no. The same question he's asking is what they asked from Lagos yesterday. Uh, what is that our mind? Are you married? You have children? Two. Do you love them the same way? Huh? It's not possible. Is it possible? I have two daughters. The other people accuse me of loving my first daughter more than others. And the answer is yes. Why? Pay her school fees. She will give you a love letter. Buy her new dresses. She will write you a powerful letter. Do anything to show the world you are her father. She is given to letter writing. She will take time to write, to weave a letter for you. And so it's difficult not to love her more than others. Because she knows how to express her thoughtful heart. When you have a thoughtful heart, you're going to have a grateful heart. You will say things others cannot say. We are not all the same. In fact, I used to preach and I still do. It is not the sermon you preach that matters, but the man behind the sermon. Every one of us will have what we call revelational knowledge of the Bible. That determines the way you relate with God. There are things you can say others will never understand. We all cannot um, we all cannot construct our letters the same way. No. 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 So well when I met Christ and prayed for a madman and he was healed, people were excited. The headmaster, my headmaster, asked the governor to adopt me as his son. He would like me to be the next governor. And I said, no, sir. I don't know how governors eat. I don't know what they do. Number two, only God can decide who will succeed who. Only God. only God. That you are my son may not allow you to succeed me. Am I correct? Yes, but but what the evil man, his children will have no respect for him. They prefer to do another type of job than what their father does. Only God can choose who will succeed a governor and who will not. Are you hearing me? Only God knows why he will prefer one man to another man. Only God does. It's amazing we are all looking in one direction. How many of you know we all cannot see the same thing? Or can we? No woman can be like your wife. 
In fact, even when you quarrel with your wife, no woman will be like her. If you send her away, one day you miss her. If she dies, you hear you say to your new wife, when the other one was alive, she would not give me this type of food. Women, am I correct? Yes. That one will go into the room to cry. My brother lost his wife. The wife came looking for me. What's the matter? She said, there is nothing I do your brother likes. He is still in love with the dead woman. And I said to her, nobody can change it. She asked me, when will I become the new wife? I don't know when. It may never happen. There is something that tickles my brother about his first wife. That you can never achieve. There are things about God we may never know. Because he is a puzzle. He is a mystery. You cannot say you know him completely. It is not even the prayer you pray that matters. It is what God says about that other woman. Are you hearing me? I have answered three. Yes. I think I have tried. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll take one more. Daddy, thank you very much sir, for this great privilege, sir. Okay. Um, I, I have a question according to what was written in Matthew 22, 14. Where it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. And over time I've come to understand that we are called as believers in the sight of God, as children of God. But then when it comes to relating it to the manifestation of Christ and his reality in our present generation, I have been confused because I want to understand do we manifest God based on our desire or his desire as God to use us in this generation. What do you mean by manifest God? Okay, that like, like the power, manifestation of power in generation, like miracle, the power of miracle and other signs and wonders. Just like you said to him that we, uh, it's only God that decides or prefers. So I want to understand whether our manifestation is based on our desire to manifest it or God's desire to use it for a certain generation. I don't understand. What do you mean manifestation? Power. To command miracle, to command power, to command signs. <laughs> You're a funny man. <laughs> For you to command power, you have to have a relationship with God. Relationship with God will help you think like God and speak like God. At the same time, it depends on who you are. There are many of us that have value for money. There are others who don't have value for money. I'm going to shock you. Everyone here, the blessings, financial blessings God will give you will be determined by the value you have for money. If you reach a level where one million naira will mean nothing to you. God can give you more than you can handle. Have I made any sense here? There are people that money doesn't mean anything to them. But there are women, you can't even, you can't confuse them with money. They're not interested. They have other things they think about, not what you call money. I drove to our, vill our village. I met an age mate of mine who said to me, Ma, on my way to this village, I stopped by and paid one million naira into my account. If you insult me, I'll jail you. 
I now have joined the class of the rich. Because of one million naira, he said yes, my friend. I paid five million. No, I paid fifty million on my way to this village. So one million is no money. He asked me, "You mean you have?" 50 million in your account. You have not gone mad because this one I paid myself. You're troubling me. There are people that money doesn't mean anything to them. Huh? There are others. Little money <laughs> will not allow them to sleep. I still hear. This one is a, a very public information. A, 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 young, a young man I prayed for called me and said God asked him to buy me a Jeep at the cost of what? 100 million. And buy two of them. That's 200 million. I think, Madam, was it you that asked, why didn't you give him cash? Not you. Somebody asked, ah, oh God, why, why do you give him such expensive jeep? Give him cash. The man said, God instructed me to give him not cash, but the car. <laughs> you come to a place one day when money will mean nothing to you. Are you still here? Yes, but the ability to be used by God to answer questions and solve problems and bring healing is, is wonderful. God will use you to bless others. Amen. And blessing others will make you happy. Amen. Are you hearing me? Let me ask you my own question. How many of you will prefer that God will use you to bless others? You prefer it. Wow. Can I say it shall be so? Onye wigwe ana me kele giwo onu mu juru ne kele ebi gwere ndu foro mo onu mu juru ne odi mani mi ma ana me kele giwo Oh, 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 oh,
pray for you your hand will be the hand we shall use and you are going to receive total and complete and implicit healing yeah. therefore place your hand where you have your sickness where you have your pain where the enemy troubles you and attacks you and you are ready to say to God set me free from my enemy everybody you will use only three minutes to say that prayer father make me free and let your healing anointing set me free father visit me and wipe away my tears father every voice that speaks against me shall speak no more and whoever has interest in harassing me shall have no interest again in harassing me. Say that prayer two, three more minutes and I will bring the prayer to a conclusion.
in Jesus name to araya mama to araya mama Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 